my message is about the idea of unhiding. Because what if I told you that we are all hiding something? It could be our hair color. It could be our weight. It could be things that are beyond that, like our financial status or our family background. It could be something that we haven't shared with anyone, that we have a story in our head that we tell ourselves. And some of you may be thinking, well, I really hope she doesn't ask me what I'm hiding. Some of you may be having to think for a moment about what it is that you've been hiding. And some of you are the open book. You think that you're not hiding anything. And that's okay because for much of my life, I didn't think that I was hiding something necessarily. I thought it was part of my life. And what I've realized is I knew firsthand about hiding because I actually did it for much of my life. And if you had ever said to me, well, you're going to be up here sharing that secret with others, I wouldn't have believed you. I would have maybe laughed it off. And I probably would have hidden even more. But here I am, and I wanted to share with you my secret with the hopes that it opens up doors for the things that you may be hiding and how it's affecting your life. Do you remember your first day of high school? I do. She looked a little something like this. Sweet. She she was starting a new high school. It was September 7th, 1983. And by starting that new high school, she was nervous. She was excited. She was leaving the safe confines of her middle school to start this big new high school. And she waited at the bottom of the bu- of their driveway for her bus. And as I was waiting there at that bottom of my driveway, I took a deep breath in and I climbed the three steep stairs of that yellow school bus. And as I walked down the aisle of that bus, I made my first big high school decision. Where would I sit? I wasn't going to sit in the front row. And I wasn't daring enough to head to the back with the troublemakers and the cool kids. So no, I chose a seat right in the middle so that I had the vantage point of checking people out while they came on the bus. And what I realized was they were checking me out too. We were noticing each other. What were we wearing? Did we like the style of our hair? Did we like how each other looked? Could we be friends with each other? And then it happened. Someone stared just a little bit too long. They noticed my hand. And immediately, I became self-conscious. And I tucked my little hand into the front left pocket of my jeans. And I told myself, it will just stay there for the bus ride. I don't want anyone else to stare. And when we got to school, my hand stayed in my pocket. And it was strange because I had never done that before. And as the day went on, it felt more comfortable to have it there so that I could meet people and not have them ask questions, not have them stare too long. And that first day turned into that first week. I kept hiding it. And that first week turned into that first year of high school. And I told myself over the summer before I returned for the second year that I would stop hiding it. I was exhausted from always having to get out of class early to get to my locker and try to fumble with my lock and carry my books and hide my hand. I was tired of getting out of gym class because I didn't want to participate for anyone to see my hand. I even had to carry the lunch tray with one hand and was always worried that it would tip over if someone hit it by accident. So sometimes I skipped lunch 
And so when I went back for my second year, I kept hiding. And then I went off to college and I told myself then, this is the chance to stop hiding. You get to show up as somebody new. You, nobody knows your four years of hiding. And yet when I got to campus, I kept hiding. I didn't know how to stop hiding. And that pattern followed me throughout my life for 25 years. Because see, hiding, it's a lot like lying. The more that we do it, the harder it is to stop. And this time I want to spend with all of you today is to think about where you're hiding in your life, how it's holding you back how it's preventing you from doing the things you love. Because hiding is really about fitting in and covering those parts of ourselves for fear of rejection, for fear of judgment, and for fear of the stories that we tell ourselves about the thing itself. And many of us hide parts of ourselves. If I were to ask you what percentage of people do you think hide a part of themselves and own hiding a part of themselves in the workplace, what number would you say? Think about it. What number, what percentage of people do you think hide a part of themselves in the workplace? I've heard numbers as low as 30. I've heard numbers as high as 100. In 2013, Deloitte did a study that showed that 61% of your friends, your family, your coworkers hide a part of themselves in the workplace. 61%. I think 10 years later, that number is higher, much higher. Just think about the last three years alone with the muted microphones and the turned off cameras and sometimes the faux backgrounds that we get to hide behind. Somebody reminded me recently about those faux backgrounds, what their job is to hide the dirty laundry sometimes that we have piling up, or the dishes, or the people that are coming in and out of our Zooms. No, hiding, I actually think, based on my research and writing, the number is higher, much higher. And by proof of that, I've had many conversations about hiding. For example, the woman who told me that she was hired during COVID. And for her, she, she didn't, nobody at, in the workplace knows that from the legs down, in her words, that she's immobile. Those are her words. And she's petrified about having to return to the office because people will find out. And she's afraid of the judgment and the rejection and that people will have to figure things out and accommodate her in ways that she didn't ask for. Or the leader that I talked to who said that when he works from home, he turns his camera off and mutes his microphone because he has a child with mental health challenges that he doesn't want anyone to see because he's afraid of being seen as a bad father because of the outburst sometimes or a bad leader. No, hiding, I've learned, is universal. It's also exhausting and lonely. It takes a toll on our mental and physical health. It keeps us disconnected from ourselves and from others. And the challenge is that when we hide, we actually don't allow people to get to know the full us. We don't allow them to get to know all of our wonderful pieces, and we actually limit the ways that we think about ourselves. And so I've made my passion project around building a community and a movement around unhiding, creating those psychologically safe places in our communities and our workplaces so that people can unhide to bring their best selves to work. Not their authentic selves, because I don't think workplaces are set up for that. We don't have the coaches and therapists that we need in our workplaces to, to, to manage through that. But how do we bring our best selves to work so that we can ask for the support and kindness? And I often believe that it starts with leadership and that leaders go first. And so how I want to spend our time today and our conversation is around the idea of 
taking the first step of unhiding. So I ask you to think about what is it that you're hiding? What is it that's keeping you from thriving because you're afraid if someone found out that part of yourself, they wouldn't, they would judge you or they'd reject you, you think. And people have shared with me many things that they're hiding, whether it be their family backgrounds, their financial backgrounds, their education, their religion, their politics, the list goes on. And so I'm hoping in our discussion, not only can we think about what are the places that people are hiding so that if that 61% or higher number is true, that people are hiding, that we can either A, think about what we're hiding or be an ally to those who are also hiding and make that supportive, psychologically safe place for them to unhide. And so as we go into the conversation, what is your pocket story? What is it that you're hiding? Because as I said, when we hide, we keep ourselves disconnected from others and from ourselves. It's exhausting and it's lonely. And I'm here to tell you that the other side, I learned to unhide. And I have four steps on how we unhide. And today I want to talk about the first one. And that's about acknowledging what it is that you're hiding.